Saudi Arabia, and I get along great with all of them. They buy apartments from me, they spend 40 million, 50 million. Am I supposed to dislike them? I like them very much. I love the Saudis. Many are in this building. Saudi Arabia, as an, I like the Saudis. They're very nice. I make a lot of money with them. They buy all sorts of my stuff. All, all kinds of toys from Trump. They pay me millions and hundreds of millions. Shut up! On the air everywhere, this is New England Broadcasting. Welcome to the Ron Van Dam Show. Hold on tight. Things can get a bit weird if you like that sort of thing. Yes, why don't you just shut up? Whatever. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, it's the Ron Van Dam Show, I'm serious, it really is, you clicked on it, what do you want from me? Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, whatever your liquid libation may be in the morning, and join us as we take a look at the world around us. As much as it's a pleasure to be with you, the pleasure is actually all yours. And now, here's your host, Ron Van Dam. Hey, welcome to the program. How are you today? Good to be with you. This is this is a special occasion for no reason whatsoever. Every time we get together, it's a special occasion. Whew, wow, am I milking this or what? Well, relax, take it easy, I'll take care of things for about a half hour or so, and you just take it easy, fall asleep, take a nap, (laughs) I'll just ramble on, and you just do what you want to do, I don't care, clean the bathroom, I mean, have you been in your bathroom lately? Not good, not good. Saw a television commercial for for like a blue light, which is like a black light, I don't know if it's blue or black, but... Apparently, you turn off the lights, you turn on this little blue-black light thing, and all the uh, all the stains and the feces and all that kind of stuff uh, glows like in fluorescent, fluorescent, fluorescent orange, ladies and gentlemen. So you know exactly which areas of your bathroom are disgusting. Here's a little clue. Did you know that, I, and I read this somewhere, therefore it's true. I found it on the Google machine. Did you know that the dirtiest thing in your house is not your toilet, it's not your sink, it's not your doorknobs, it's your spouse, filthy, no, that's not your spouse, it's the remote control for your television or cable, that remote control is the filthiest thing in the house, so stop kissing it, my God, seriously, (laughs) I'm entertaining myself, I don't care about you at this point. A recent Gallup poll, and this is not a poll about how fast horses run. This is a Gallup poll about uh, President Trump, I think his name is. I'm not sure. I have no connection to him. I have no want or need of him. This man, uh, the Gallup poll, uh, do you think that President Trump is doing a good job as president? Well, is that a loaded question or what? 38% said... Yeah, he's doing good. 60% said, no, he's doing not good at all. He's horrible. 2%, I think, were shopping at Ikea and weren't available. They got lost in the Ikea store. Have you ever been to an Ikea store? It's not just Swedish meatballs. (laughs) Some people walk into that store shopping for furniture and they never come out. It's like a maze. It's amazing. (laughs) It really is. It's like two or three floors of, of, it's like a haunted house. (laughs) It's it's weird. People are walking around with clipboards and I don't know why. It's like a summer camp. I don't, I don't understand it. 
you walk through the store and you choose an item that you think you might want to buy, but you don't at that point. You write it on a clipboard and then you go down another level or up another level. I have no idea. And you take it off the warehouse shelf yourself if you can find it. This takes all day. If you're ever going to Ikea, pack a lunch, bring pajamas, and let your relatives know that you love them and you'll probably never see them again. Because this store you cannot get out of. It's, it's, an, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. Whenever I feel lonely, I go to Ikea and I just watch little families walking around. It's, it's fun. It's, it's full of little families. It's full of uh, people who are just turning 21 years old and are making believe they're playing house and are looking for stuff. I don't go to Ikea because it's against my religion. Because I don't assemble furniture. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have more pride than that. I, I am not going to go fishing through a uh, three-floor warehouse of no return, try to shove the thing in the back of my car and it never fits, no matter how small the box is. Then you get it home and you spend the next four days trying to assemble the thing. You assemble it, five days later the thing breaks and you don't know how to return it and you swear you'll never go back to Ikea again, but you're back the next day enjoying their meatballs, which are not really that tasty to be honest with you. Do you know why their Swedish meatballs aren't that tasty? Because you have nothing to compare it with. Nobody ever says, oh, the meatballs at Ikea, much better at Costco. No, they don't have Swedish meatballs at Costco, at least not that you can try it's just nothing compares to a Kia Swedish meatball because no one else bothers to do that. What kind of store would, would place their claim on Swedish meatballs? I mean, come on, come on. Don't get me wrong. They have hot dogs too. That's for the uneducated and uncultured, but otherwise it's like going to a high school cafeteria and eating Swedish meatballs. That doesn't fit. Uh, I guess you could I guess you could meet your future spouse at IKEA because you'd both get lost together, and by the time you get out, you've bonded. Uh, I, I don't know. You know those little, um, those little places where you get trapped in a room and the lights go out and you have to figure out how to get out of there. They have these their entertainment amusement places. That's what Ikea is. That's where they got the idea from. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh-huh. I don't have to go to Ikea to buy furniture, okay? That's not necessary. I can go to Bernie and Phil's and then go home and eat a meatball and get the same pleasure out of it. Ikea, give me a break. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, the gallop pole. <laughs> wow. This is, this is pretty revealing on how my brain is going all over the place. And you, you're just sitting back in a chair. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, no, no, don't participate. It's okay. I don't do the social media thing, so you can't, uh, you can't tweet or you can't twat me because I'm not going to read it. And I don't even, I, I have it, but I don't look at it. I have a lot of things that I don't use. I have testicles. I don't think I use them. I, I, I think I, I use them a couple of times. Um. Uh, I guess they worked, but other than that, I don't, um, I don't use them. I don't really kind of get in the way of things, to be honest with you. Anyway, uh, hi. <laughs> How you doing? So the Gallup poll, uh, 60% of Americans uh, don't approve of what uh, Trump is, and 38% say, yeah, he's all right. So uh, that's revealing. And again, 2% at Ikea. That's how I got to the Ikea thing. Now I remember. If the numbers are... And by the way, you can't win a presidency uh, at a 60 to 40 spread. <laughs> These are the worst numbers that Trump has had uh, this entire calendar year. And don't forget, we're going into December. So out of the past 11 months, this is the worst he's had. I don't know. I <laughs> Could he be doing something wrong? <laughs> could, could he be offensive somehow? I, re I don't know. I really don't know. And remember this. In January, those tariffs 
uh, imposed by China and other countries because Trump started this little tariff war, uh, prices will go up. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm losing my voice. That's a good thing to do. Uh, prices will go up in, in January because of the tariffs, and it's mostly on Chinese goods. And remember, everything in this country is Chinese goods. Everything. Yes. Uh, members of your family were manufactured in China. You didn't know that, did you? Every, everything you use, everything you buy, everything you taste, except for the Swedish meatballs. But probably all those stores that you love to shop in, uh, the Marshalls, the, the, the TJ Maxx, the, the Five and Below, which, by the way, I thought was just a store that kept it really cold inside. Uh, that was the temperature inside the store, but I, I, but I understand it's $5 and below. Now it's going to be called 25 and below probably. The dollar store, that's all Chinese goods. They're going to have to change their name to the $100 store. Everything in the store is $100 or less. No, not less, just $100. Uh, yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You'll see. So when you have that much uh, disapproval of the president, couldn't there be some type of petition? Uh, and if you get like, I think there's like a little over 300 million people in this country, except for those that are IKEA. Uh, if like 150 million sign a, peti- a petition or a petition to have another election, why can't you have one if that's what the people want? And then you change things up and you see how that one goes. Because <laughs> this one ain't going well. This one is not going very well. All right. I don't want to talk too political today because you know probably how I feel about this particular president. Um, I, I think he's on the path to destruction. I think that uh, he probably would have sex with Putin and let Kim uh, watch. Uh, Kim would be the leader of North Korea. I call him Kim. Uh, We're on first name basis, apparently. (laughs) Trump loves dictators. He wants so much to be a dictator. Because when you own a company like Trump did, you're a dictator. You don't don't have to ask other people what to do. You do what you want to do. And if they don't want to do it, you fire them. That was like the entire deal in The Apprentice Show. That's, that's what he's used to all of his life. He's in charge. He makes the decisions. He goes with his gut. Uh, everything he thinks works for him. There's no consultation. There's no voting. There's no, there's no for anybody else. It's all for Donald. It's all for Donald in his pocket. That's Donald. You voted for him, some of you. So now he's president. And did anybody ever think that... He wouldn't uh, do anything for the American people just for himself. Perfect example at the top of the show. I played a quote from him. I don't have to repeat it. You heard it. He loves the Saudis. They, They pay him millions and millions of dollars. He does incredible business with them. Uh, he, he, they, they love his product. They buy his product. The Saudis, uh, love uh, Trump's merchandise. They buy it all the time. And yet, just about uh, a couple of weeks ago, when uh, Trump was talking about the assassination by the uh, Saudi prince, apparently, uh, he says, no, the Saudi prince had nothing to do with it. He says, besides, uh, I don't deal with Saudi Arabia. I don't do any business with them. I, I have no business dealings or business relationships with <laughs> relationships with them whatsoever. That's what he said. And yet we played a soundbite saying that they pay him millions of dollars and the Saudis love the Trump products and, and they and they do it and he's renting out floors of his hotels to Saudis and making business transactions. This guy's such a liar, it's unbelievable. And yet thirty eight percent of this country, the people, they don't think that's lying. I can play the things for you. Well, Ron, you're, you're misinterpreting what he's saying. What? How do you misinterpret what the guy actually said? And that's just one out of seven million examples. Sorry, I get carried away. I just, uh, I just, I shouldn't get so involved. Not with this painful itch. 
You are listening to The Ron Van Dam Show, the podcast world's version of painful itching and swelling. You know they sell a cream for that, right? It's over the counter. Works really well. I've had to use it a lot. You know, uh, uh, unfortunately, there are missing children uh, all throughout this country every day of the week, and it's agonizing for the parents. Their their child, their children just disappear, and they fear the worst for them. And they put their pictures on milk bottles and milk cartons. There's no more milk bottles, I don't believe. And uh, it's a traumatic experience. And yet, I I say, like, why don't you check your local IKEA store? They're probably there. Now, I know that's not funny. (laughs) I'm quite aware of that. I'm making an observation. That's what I do. I make observations. I have this, this thing about me, and I've had it since I was an infant. I remember the day that, that I was born. I was delivered from, from my mother's uh, spread eagle position. And I remember coming down that tube and being exposed to the light of this hospital room and seeing the doctor and the nurse and my mother's crotch and um, and all that stuff. And I remember just looking at the room and uh, taking in and, and saying to myself, that nurse over there, I wonder what her situation is. I wonder if she's married. I remember thinking that at birth before my brain was even developed. I have been over analytical my entire life. Most people just see something in front of their face. I, I see the stuff beyond, beyond them. I'm coming up with scenarios about everything. And if I see somebody walk into a room, I'm wondering, why are, why are they walking in here? What's their deal? What are they going to do? What are they thinking? Are they happy? Are they sad? Do they have gas? I don't. Why do I think this? I overthink everything. I don't just think. I overthink. Most people I know underthink. You know, uh, if you've ever been to New York or some major city, they have these horse-drawn little carriages. And it's very romantic. You know, you sit in a carriage and... And you kiss and you make out and, you know, the horse is in front of you and some guy dressed up in a very fancy British coat is like, you know, controlling the horses and stuff. And it's a a carriage ride through the park. And they put these blinders on, on the, on these horses, not on their eyes, but on the side of their, their eyes so that the horses can't see the cars going past them. All the horses can do is look directly forward. They can just see the road in front of them, and nothing else, nothing on the sides at all. They're called blinders. And I know, most people I know, unfortunately, are these horses. Not that they look like horses, but they live their lives with blinders. All they see is what's directly in front of them. They have no peripheral vision whatsoever. They don't see anything going on. They miss a lot of stuff going on on the sides. That's where all the interesting stuff is happening. They only see straight forward. know a lot of people like this. I try not to associate with them because it's a waste of my time, and I don't have much of it. Try to associate with people that, that have eyes all over their heads, like a potato. And yet, as intelligent and, and, and observant as I am, I still can't find my way out of the Ikea place. I don't understand it. All roads lead to the meatballs. All roads lead to the cafeteria. It's very odd. I see a lot of exit signs in Ikea, but when I open the door where the exit sign is, I'm just in another part of the store. I'm not out of the building. It's very deceiving. You can never leave. You can come in, but you can never leave. Our guest joins us right after this observation. Are you aware that one in every seven Americans is in desperate need 
of a dope slap? Yes, I am. Studies show that every 17 seconds in America, someone writes, says, or does something so incredibly stupid that they deserve to be slapped, and you can help. If someone you know commits an act of boneheaded stupidity, simply extend your hand with the palm facing to the side, draw your arm back, and deliver a sharp, solid blow straight across their forehead. It's called a dope slap. It only takes a moment to perform, but the lesson can last a lifetime. This has been a message from the American Dope Slap Association and Metro South Podcasting. Okay, it's hard to tell what's real and what's fake anymore. I came across uh, this thing called the Lab Grown Diamond. Now, I'm only familiar with the real diamonds and the fake diamonds. The real diamonds would be the ones that you you go to a cave somewhere in, in Bulgaria or something or wherever they have diamonds. And it, it takes uh, thousands of years for uh, rock and stone to be turned into uh, this precious uh, diamond. And it's a very expensive thing. Um, uh, and then there's the fake diamond, the cubic zirconia. looks like a diamond. It isn't. It's just like plastic or some other thing. Or lucite. I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, now I've, I've, I've heard of a lab-grown diamond. And I thought, well, if it's lab-grown, uh, then it's not real. Nay, nay, Ron. It is real. They actually, uh, it's like a pressure cooker. They take this, uh, this, this rock or substance and they add uh, all the pressure to this thing and, and it turns into a diamond just as it would take thousands of years naturally. But it, that's still a real diamond. It's the properties of it are and has been created just like a real diamond because it is a real diamond. It's technically a real diamond. I was fascinated by this. So I thought I would speak to one of the experts who know far more about this than I do. Let's uh, raise them right now. Good morning, Ron. How are you? Hi, Sally. How are you today? Very, very well, thank you. Great. Sally Morrison is the CMO of Lightbox Jewelry, and we're talking about something that I had no idea there was even such a thing to talk about. Uh, diamonds, we all know that, and it's a great uh, gift during the holiday season. But I didn't know, apparently, they, they can be grown in a lab? Absolutely, yes. Um, it's quite new technology, and these stones have the same physical and chemical properties, same optical properties as natural diamonds. But, as you said, they come out of a laboratory. They're grown in a laboratory rather than coming from huh. deep in the earth where they were made billions of years ago. So it's a new product. Um, the very interesting thing about it, I think, for consumers is that these lab-grown diamonds that we're talking about today from Lightbox Jewelry mm -hmm. um, are offered at $800 a carat. So it's a flat, linear pricing, and I think it gives consumers a nice option of something perhaps a little bit more affordable for those gift moments where perhaps they don't need to make the commitment of a natural diamond. Okay. Now, just in comparison, because... It's been a while since I've dabbled in the diamond world. Uh, what, uh -huh. would, what would be a carat of, of a mined diamond? What would be the well, cost uh, of that? A, 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 a natural diamond um, would be in the thousands of dollars, uh -huh. um, uh -huh. a few thousand up to many thousand, of course, depending on the quality. Yeah. Um, but these are just flat pricing. We believe that because they're manufactured, mm -hmm. because we can make them every day, they, they should be sold sort of in a linear sure. way by weight. And the, the fun thing is that these actually come in color mm -hmm. as well as um, the classic white. So we have some beautiful sort of baby pink um, stones and some soft blue stones. So it also gives, I think, consumers a way to perhaps like have that sort of scintillation and sparkle but with a, a color. So it's a very, very new thing. I think most people will have not seen this before. Hmm. Now, how do you actually do this? Um, well, um, we take a, a seed of diamond and put it, um, expose it to intense heat, uh -huh. very low pressure for a couple of weeks. And uh, two weeks later, um, a piece of rough lab-grown diamond comes out of the machine, and it's then cut and polished um, in the same way, same technique as if it were a, a piece of natural diamond. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Uh, is it hardly detectable? Um, well, ours are detectable because they have a laser inscription uh -huh. uh, inside the stone. We have our logo mm -hmm. so that you can look at under the, you know, a, a regular 10, 10, type, 10 multiplication loop uh, yeah. that jewelers have in their stores, and you will see our logo. So you will know 
um, very clearly, very transparently, that this is a lab-grown diamond. It is not a natural diamond. All right, but it's but it's still a diamond. It's still a diamond. It shares those properties. It's sparkly. It's pretty. And honestly, it's a lot of fun. And I think for a lot of women, it's a way to augment their jewelry box with a, a little bit more sparkle and a little bit different way in color or whatever. Yeah. Now, how is that different than the the other the cubic zirconia and all those other things that are like decades old? Yeah. Well, cubic zirconia and that family of things mm. are, are simulants. You know, they're uh. things that look like diamonds but are not actually diamonds. Right. What we're talking about with these lab-grown diamonds, they actually are chemically a diamond. The one difference uh -huh. is the method that they're made. I see. Wow. And they're more affordable because they are grown in the lab? They're, they're more affordable because they can, it's a manufactured process. Uh -huh. uh, the technology is there. They can be made with consistency. They can made, be made over and over again. Mm -hmm. So it's able to be to make them very efficiently, and I think to to you know, to, to offer them uh, at, at really much more accessible prices. It's just that little bit less of a commitment um, yeah. if you're looking for a nice gift, uh, you know. Yeah. So, um, do insurance companies consider them to be uh, like uh, natural diamonds, or they, they? I guess they they can be insured for less as well. Well, I, 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 I can't speak to the insurance industry, yeah. but I would say that because they cost less, I'm yeah. sure that the insurance value is less, right? But, but you know... It's, I would hope so. I think the, the way insurance works, you, you insure what you paid for something yeah. against what you paid for something. Yeah, that's for damn yeah. sure. Because uh, <laughs> I remember uh, getting involved in, in the purchase of a diamond, and that was horrible. And then the insurance is like, well, are you kidding me now? So anyway, that's good. I'm glad you're doing this. Um, this is fairly new technology. How long has it been available? Well, the technology has been available um, for actually many years, yeah. 30 or 40 years, mostly actually to create diamonds for industrial processes, you know, drill yes. bits, things a dentist yeah, would yeah, use. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there are diamonds in for right. all that stuff. Right. Now they can create gem quality material, oh, so it really is beautiful enough to wear. So this is a little bit of a, a new evolution of a, an older technology, I would say. All right. Now, um, as I wasn't aware of it, uh, how would I find them? Um, well, I think start by going to our website, which is lightboxjewelry.com. There's some great education about the category on the site, great information, a little film of showing how they're made mm -hmm. in the machine. So I would encourage you to start there. Um, it, there's some fun stuff. Okay. How long does it usually take when you order? In other words, we're coming up on the holidays. How far ahead should I start looking at this? Um, I would say start looking now because uh -huh. I know what men are like and they leave it all to the yeah, last minute yeah, around the holidays. Yeah, yeah. So, like, Sally go for Justin's it and start your it. research. Okay, right. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, uh, if you, if you uh, from our, for example, if you order on our website, um, mm. there, is an, there is an e commerce section on our website, and mm. if you order before 2 o'clock, um, you know, it will be shipped out that day. Oh, okay, so it can be quick. But still, don't, uh, don't waste time. Right. Don't waste time because she she doesn't want to be awaiting on ho on the holidays. <laughs> no, and if you make her wait on the holidays, you don't want to know what can happen. <laughs> exactly. Okay, yes. fine. I mean, I said that you didn't. Uh, so, okay. okay, good enough. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, uh, and once more, that website is is lightboxjewelry.com. Perfect, Sally. Good talking to you again. Thank you so much. You too. A pleasure. Okay. Uh, have a good holiday season. Thank bye bye. You, you too. Bye bye. Okay. Lab-grown diamonds. There you go. There you have it. There's all the information you need. I just earned my paycheck. Ladies and gentlemen, we're out of time for today. Ron, really? Seriously? I want to spend hours more with you. Take it from me. No, you don't. Let's spread this out a bit. Why don't you come back tomorrow and we'll do different stuff, okay? You want to come back tomorrow? Anytime during the day. This stuff is always here. You don't have to be here at a particular time. Make this a habit. A good habit, you know? Seriously. All right, fine. That's enough. Have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day. You know, you can make it a great day. I was taught that recently. You can make it a great day with your attitude. I know it doesn't take much to kill the attitude to bust the bubble, but start out with a good attitude and... You'll be amazed how far you can go. At least six minutes. Have yourselves a wonderful day. I wish you peace. Everybody, come on.
sail on. 